Musky endured the investigator's quizzical stare as he was guided to the reception area in CID Section 1 of the MPD. He knew exactly why they treated him like that, of course. After all, he'd been here twice before in handcuffs. And while he'd been found innocent in both cases, they didn't take the slightest bit of the edge he felt in this place off. Musky ended up waiting inordinately long for Yaginuma to get back from whatever job he was off doing. Not once was he served tea during his lengthy sojourn. That was probably just par for the course with the police. It wasn't until someone sometime past 11 that Yaginuma finally showed up. すみません。でも頼みがあってきたんです。聞く義理もないんですがね。天啓会に聞いてです。話は聞いても構いませんが、頼みを聞くかは別問題ですからね。ヤギヌマ資料は雑踏目を通しました。その捜査資料を見せてくれませんか。見せる義理はありませんよ。それはあなたたちには連続殺人事件を追ってもらっているんです。I わかってからこちらに話を持ってきてください。Igumo was about to leave when he suddenly looked at Masuki's face like he'd realized something. 君はその孤児院のことについて。え、それは虐待やスト。誰から聞いた？当時孤児院に勤めていた人間からです。Masuki deliberately hid now at his name. Figured it was only common sense that a detective not rat out their sources. 虐待の具体的な内容は？そこまでは聞いていません。そうか。Eganuma snorted haughtily as if to scream, useless bastard. The young inspector suddenly came forth and saluted with those words. The inspector whispered into Yaginuma's ear after glancing at Masuki. Masuki spoke up once the inspector had left. Yeah. Just as he was about to ask what he that meant, Masuki saw Reiji and Toji approaching. Hell yeah. Yaginuma sprang to his feet and turned to me. Mada Kakte Joho Janai. Toji got Kinjo Junin Nikikomi Oshta Wakata Kotode. Kotirani Kureba, Nanda Kanojo Hoga Haiti Kitiru to Funda. まだこちらに通報などは来ていません。Yaginuma raised his hand, hailing the young inspector who had shown us in. Kimi,大至急所轄の警官を向かわせて。Inspector raised for a telephone. ただ死んだというだけではなく、あくまでらしいということだ。建物に出入りしている近所の洗濯屋が血まみれの折り部を見たと聞いた。それが本当だとしても、自殺の可能性だって残されているのね。そのくらいのことは分かっています。報告を待ちましょう。そういう情なことは言ってられないんだな。I Kurya told me about how he found Naori Kuroya's name tag in those ruins. However, he most likely didn't want to mention Naori's name in front of Yaginuma, hence his ambiguity. So did the murder of the murder of the murder? I don't know what the murder was. That was more or less the same as what you Kurya told me. Not that it was any surprise, of course. So did the murder of the murder of the murder of the murder? Masuki looked at Yaginuma. It's not related to the murder of the murder of the murder. Is there a relationship between the murder of the murder? Yes. かまいませんよ。だそうだ。頑張れ。マサキ。ベルマスキーオンザショルダー。え?お前の行動の中にいくつかヒントはあるぞ。ヤギヌマくらい軽く丸めこ。いや、ですが。面白い。受けて立ち
Don't you produce a cigarette and lit it. Yeah, she's just gonna kick back and enjoy the show. You're killed for smoke right now. Right about now, too. Tenkei Kai no Oribe ga korosare taka mo shire nai toyu hanashi desu ga. Jibun wa kino ano honbu o otozure teimasu. Must keep again his deduction. Sono toki wa sonna yousu wa mijin mo arimasen deshi ta kara. Korosare tan da to shita ra sono ato da to omoimasu. Sore ga yuuryuk na jouhou desu ka? Eginuma sounded exasperated. Jikan ga hanare sugi teru da ro. けさあれだけざわついていたんだ夜の間に殺され朝になっていたいが発見されたと考える方があったどうだ。それは、ですね。Held up and smoked my cigarette to throw him a bone. 先日、とある女学生が典型会に迎え入れられた。これは本人の意思で行ったものと思われるが。ところが彼女は白百合の園にいたという証言が得られている。それが事実か確認したくて、当時の資料を見せてもらいたいんだよ。理由はわかりました。しかしそれのどこが今回の件と関係しているというのですか彼女が典型会離したのは昨日あるいは一昨日だその女学生の名はまだ言えねえよ<笑> this guy, like、like、こちらでも調べればすぐにわかることですよ知ってるさ少し頭を冷やさせる時間を置きたいんだねそもそもオリベが殺されたと決まったわけではないんです。Funny, coming from the guy who'd once rashly arrested the very man sitting across from him. まあいいでしょう。どうせ待っている間は暇ですからね。Agnuma shrugged, held the young inspector over, and gave him a handwritten note. その資料を持ってきてくれ。それと現状からの報告を急がせろ。はっ。The inspector hurried out of the room, and at long last I was able to light my cigarette in peace. ヤギヌマ。典型会系列の金融会社について当然でしょう。寄進をもとに信者間の相互援助という形で運営しているとされていますが違法行為によって得た資金を洗浄することを目的としているのでしょうから証拠さえ揃えばいつでも摘発できますよそれにより利益を得ているとすれば宗教法人法の非課税特権も失われるだろうさ But I couldn't have cared less about putting this company out of business. All I wanted was to find out who'd attacked her. Kindly, Kanto, no. I'm not saying that. Young Inspector returned with the files. Gokuro, Genjo, what's up? I'm not sure. 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 I'm not Seemed it was a list of orphans under the White Lily Garden's care at the time of the incident. It was divided between those who had and hadn't died in the group's suicide. Though it seemed many died, there was also a lot who didn't. Ones who probably hadn't even participated in the incident. Suddenly I saw a name that made me freeze right up. So just get in the list. I'd seen the name Yukio among the dead, which I'd momentarily mistaken for Yukiko. Yeah, she's gotta be with the survivors. Huh, found her. My eyes fixed themselves on the name Yukiko. No surname. It was probably her. Yaginuma came on over to me. Should I tell him? My eyes danced around the roster for a bit. Then I noticed one, no, two other names that rang a bell. Kohane was one of them, right? Now these he can't know about. Not yet. Just now, I went to the Tenkei Kai to find the young man. Ah! Now I gotta sit here and guess. God damn it! All right. I imagine Kohana has to be one of them because she seems to be pretty. She said that she used to be pretty much close to the Yukiko clan. Yeah, she was. 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 She Or maybe that was just Yukiko saying that to herself. That's also a possibility. I don't know. I'm pretty sure Kohane's got to be one of the names on there. 
But then he said there were two names. He said there were two names on there. Michiru, maybe? Potentially. I, I could see that being a possibility. Because it was just an orphanage. Age, ages don't have to line up at all. It's just orphanage could be any number of ages. Let's think, how old is Michiru? Do we know that? Because this this uh, suicide, group suicide happened in 52. So is Michiru older than nine years old? Or younger than nine years old? That's the real question. Girl hospitalized. Her foster parents are members of the Blessed Congregation. Lost her eye living in an orphanage. Seems to be old friends with Yuki Kayahara. I think it's gotta be Michiru. I think it's gotta be Michiru is the other one. Koane seems to be the obvious pick since she seems to have a history with Yukiko. I'm thinking Michiru has to be the other one. And it's a good possibility because we know that neither Kohane or Yukiko have had any interaction with Michiru. Like they've never run into her. So there, there's been no point, for, chance for them to like recognize her and be like, oh, Michiru from the orphanage. But yeah, no, we know that Michiru's foster parents were with the Blessed Congregation and that she was originally from an orphanage. That seems to line up pretty well that she was the other person in that orphanage. And I guess that could lend to why she has so many, um, self-inflicted wounds right because she watched probably so many of her friends die and that she probably feels guilty and wants to go with them right that's probably why she makes keeps making attempts on her own life that can kind of line up what about yukiko's name the yaginuma yukiko ヨーボも典型会の関係者ではある。分かってますよ、先輩。証拠が固まるまで犯人扱いはしませんから。ignore <laughs> She looked into my eyes, trying to read my mind. They indicated the White Lily Garden's orphan roster. Oh, hi. Mm. And then we think about it, we know Naori worked there. We know that Naori's been in cahoots with Nanako. We know that Nanako is like the one nurse that Michiru is chill around, other than uh, Koharu. Kohara is not a nurse. She's a well, she's many things, but I guess she, I, I mean Kohara does take care of her on occasion. But we know that Nanako is the one who's primarily the one that takes care of her. No, that kind of checks out. That kind of checks out. Very loud. Tokoro de Yaginuma. Nan desu ka? Toji ni nani o shirabe sasete iru. Toji said she'd been sworn to silence, but surely there wouldn't be an issue if I heard directly from the horse's mouth.僕が抱えている戦時中にあったと言われている人体実験がなるほど。それに意図せ水木の父親が絡んでいたという訳か。典型会の系列だった個人での集団自殺。だったらさっさと資料を出してやれよ。彼からあちらに情報が漏れる可能性もありますからね
名簿は置いていってくださいね。わかってるよ。That's fine, seeing as how I'd already memorized the most important pieces of information. The name's Michiru and Kohane Yoshino. Yep. Yoshino. 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 Do we know a Yoshino? Because her current name is Tori. But Yoshino. That sounds familiar, but it could just be a surname I've heard from. It could be something from a completely different game, but it sounds familiar. Yoshino. We haven't heard of a Yoshino yet, have we? Midori Yoshino? Name was written on Shizuru Hinagami's list of bridal candidates. Mother of the candidate in question. Oh! Oh, 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 is that so? Okay. Wait, so Kohane was going to be the next bridal candidate? Okay. Interesting. But they couldn't find her because she got adopted to a new family. And then, yeah, Michiru was the other one. Okay. Yeah, I kind of figured. All right. All right. Interesting. I wasn't expecting that to be Kohane's role in the story. Okay. So she's the one we got to keep an eye out for, make sure nothing happens to, right? I headed straight for Kachiki Hospital after leaving the MPD. After all, I needed to verify my suspicions about the name of the roster. Though admittedly, I wasn't sure I'd actually get anything out of her. I found Kaoru as soon as I stepped inside. Yamanochi-sensei. Ara, Tokisaka-san. Sore wa ato desu. Sono hazu desu mo. Eh. Ma, nan to yu hodo no koto dewa nai no desu ga. All I'd done was see a name on a piece of paper. Amari shigeki o shinai yo ni shite kudasai. Yeah, something tells me that he's gonna agitate her, though. Because didn't your notes specifically say she lost her eye at the orphanage? Like, your notes specifically. Has a fake left eye, seems to have lost it when living at an orphanage. That's something you have written in your notes. So you're gonna go in there and mention an orphanage to her. Like, damn, homie. Honey? Did I say honey? Jesus. Damn, homie. That's, that's... I don't mean to agitate her. However, let me bring up what is likely the darkest point in her life that she tries to fucking forget, you know? That's probably the reason she keeps making attempts on her own life. Yeah, let's just casually bring that up. Oh, don't worry. I don't want to agitate her. I'm not going to agitate her. Enter Michiru's room. She's leaning beneath the window, staring up the ceiling as if it were a starry sky. Michiru? Her eye turned to me. What? I don't want to talk to you. No. Damn, that was the fastest I've ever been rejected. This is not the same thing. It's a different story. So I doubt that she'd take very kindly to this topic either. What story? Ichiro suddenly jolted, and she rolled up her sheets and crawled under the covers. Oh, boy. She probably realized what I wanted to discuss. Ichiro stuck out her hand, reaching for the stuffed rabbit on her bed. Ichiro jiggled her stuffed rabbit as she spoke. Guess the idea is that the rabbit's speaking now. Better play along. Oh, is that is that how she gets out of her promises, as having the rabbit talk? Because Michiru didn't say anything, but the rabbit, on the other hand. At least she was willing to talk. You That was as good as a yes in this situation. Girl, what she once told me, specifically about she'd seen something she hadn't wanted to. I also remembered how she lost her eye before she was adopted. If it happened at that orphanage, then maybe the group's suicide was the cause. Or at least that was all I could conceive at the moment. Stuffed Rabbit nodded. 
Couldn't butt in, much as I wanted to tell her not to call me Pops. Michi was speaking loquaciously, possibly because she was making her stuffed rabbit talk for her. Michi suddenly dropped her stuffed rabbit. Only her hand was left. She clenched into a fist, quivering. She picked up the stuffed rabbit and wiped the dust off it. Even it was still quite dirty from what had been left in the snow the other day. Michio had probably treasured it. Carol, if I was remembered correctly, for a long, long time. She gently held Michiru's hand so as not to startle her before giving her back the rabbit. Michiru. No, the rabbit. Didn't so much as budge for quite some time after that. <laughs> Suddenly she called out to me, still playing ventriloquist with Carol. Monday. まだ聞きたい。聞かせてもらいたいけれど。君が決めていいよ。じゃあ、終わりにしていいのかしら。あ。君フォースアリーフペン、ペインフルメモリーズ。お兄さん。な。スタッフラビットローズアップ。仕方
So it sounds like the one that survived, the one that I, I guess absorbed the other one, developed some kind of multiple personality disorder. Some something similar to that is what that seems to be implying. The one left became two. And to me, it still sounds, when she says absorbing, it still sounds like cannibalism. I was thinking potentially there it could be a sexual thing, but it definitely, to me, sounds like cannibalism, because that sounds like something traumatic you'd fucking rip your eye out for. The two became one, but then the one left became two. Oh, that's quite the fucking riddle you're giving me, Michiru. Okay, continue. So she hadn't actually witnessed the group's suicide then. Well, for good reason. Couldn't tell if that meant she had nothing to do with it at all, or if she simply hadn't been informed. Without saying, of course, but group suicides involved more than one person. Thanks, Reiji. So with that in mind, why had Michiru been included? Because she was at the hospital. All of a sudden, the girl in question dropped her stuffed rabbit and poked her head out from under the sheets. So, yeah, ma. Seemed your little puppet show was over. There's part of the room determined to leave Michiru's care to her nurses. Yeah, we're not replaying that. Tokisaka-san. When Fumia just so happened to pass by me. Domo, Kuchiki-san. Ah, so da. Kokono biohis no Shirosaki-san nitsuite, nani ka gozonji desu ka? Shirosaki-san desu ka? Boka ga koko ni kuru zutto mai kara nyuin sare te imasu kara, jitsu wa amari. Ma, sore wa shikata no nai koto desu yo ne. Toji tanto sare te ita ishi ni tazuneru no ga... Let me scratch his head with his gloved hand. What a strolled over when she saw us. Ah,山之内先生。それがですね。時坂さんが白崎さんのカルテを見たいとおっしゃってまして。またですか？彼女のためにも必要なことなんですか？ですわ。Kato looked up at Humia. Humia pointed to his office down the hall. Yeah, see, Humia, me and you were pals. You can trust old Reiji. I waited on the sofa until Humia came back with some documents in hand. I took the chart and looked it over. Ichiro Shirasaki, hospitalized July 1952. Attending physician, Tamaki Saito. Ah. Suffers depersonal. Wait, I think. Did we already know that? Maybe. Suffers depersonalization and self mutilation. Possibly symptoms of toxicity from excessive dosages of psychotropics. Oh. It was like the whole chicken or egg argument. Psychotropics. Right. And that's what Hinagami Pharmaceuticals, that's, that was their big thing, right? Psychotropics? Uh huh. And if she was given such a drug. Uh huh. So she was part of the ones being tested on? Is that what happened to the children? They all. It was labeled as a group suicide, but they all died as some part of a clinical trial and they got covered up. Maybe? Tamaki Saito, Rokishiki, would have made a note of it that if it had been his own handiwork. And yet, he never mentioned a word about any of this during Masaki's interrogation. He hid it on purpose, though it would certainly be in character for him. According to Masaki and Toji, 1952 was the same year as the group suicide at the White Lily Garden. The fact that Michiru was listed under the surname of Shirosaki on here meant she must have already been adopted by then. 
But in that case, did that mean she was hospitalized shortly after the White Lily Garden closed its doors? If so, that seemed everything stemmed from the White Lily Garden. The loss of her left eye, her mental trauma, the toxic doses of drugs, all of it. この記録を見れば、入院当初の白崎さんは今よりも相当ひどい状態だったようですね。医者が良かったんでしょうよ。人間性に問題があっても純粋な医者としてのでは確かですから。It's all fine and dandy until he turned his patients into serial killers. Hold up. Drug toxicity. ああ、個人で何らかの違法薬物が使われていた可能性がある。時坂さん、薬物は違法でなくても。量を誤れば深刻な副作用が現れます。そういうものの中に集団自殺を起こさせるような副作用の薬はありませんか？自殺衝動と集団ヒステリーが重なればありえない話ではありませんが。いや、集団で服毒自殺だったと言ってましたが
Oh yeah, and the guy probably nearly shit a brick and came running back the second he heard something had happened to Kyoko. Uh-huh. How convenient. One of his colleagues came to take him right back away. Unfolding just outside the Blessed Congregation's headquarters by the time Masaki and Toji got there. White robed congregants were, bar were barring entry to a blue uniformed policeman, each side shouting over the other. The believer's voice shook the air. Bear commented on the squabble as they observed it from a distance.信者だったりするんじゃない。信者であればあの連中と同様、教師が殺されたなんていう話を外部に漏らさないだろうさ。わざわざそんな嘘を喧伝する必要はありませんからね。殺されたというのが真実だと仮定して、誰が殺したのか
Uh-oh. She's pissed, isn't she? So can you sit there, please? Nisa. Whoa, am I getting grounded? What the fuck? <laughs> yeah, kind of that same reaction. Like, uh, uh, <laughs> did she ask during the consequences if I said no? What did I do wrong? Kyoko san ga kega o shita koto wa dou shite damatte ita no desu ka? Right. Right. We didn't tell her that. We gave her a very vague answer, but we didn't actually tell her. We were just like, ah, oh, yeah, something happened. <laughs> Oh shit. I think you could have completely slipped my mind. <laughs> yeah, I do. I totally forgot. Yeah,俺が悪かった。今日子の容体が安定したから話そうと思っていたんだが。もう大丈夫なんですか。ああ。今日も様子を見てきたが、傷が塞がるまで動けない以外は問題なさそうだった。ええ。そうですね。ゆくりなれ。ちょ、だって
we had mentioned that before. We had heard something about that before, but Yukiko denied it. You could deny it despite finding the whole thing bizarre. Should I tell Reiji about this? Yes. Mm. You'd love to see him again. So now the question is is he dead? Was he one of the ones who died in the group? Was he one of the two that got absorbed from Michiru's perspective? Because Michiru did say he. Specifically said he. Now, that could just be a localization thing, but I'm pretty sure that's meant to be like a hint. Specifically, that these were that there was a guy involved. Now we know about Yukio. So the question is, is Yukio dead? Or... Is Yukio someone we've already seen, but we just don't know that it's them? Right? But that's the thing, we don't run into many, uh, men <laughs> in this story. A whole lot of women. At least no, like, young men. Because obviously, he would have been an orphan at the time, and even at the oldest, like, if he were, like, in his... Well, let's think. He was Yukiko's brother, so you imagine they'd be roughly within a, a similar age range. Like, I'd say, like, within maybe a five-year age range. Just an assumption. We have really nothing to go off of there. But that means if Yukiko's, like, 17 now, at the oldest, he could be, like, in his 20s, but also he could be, like, even younger could be around her age as well. That's the thing, there's no like younger guys that we don't already know, right? Like we know who Masaki is. Naori doesn't have a hi hidden identity as far as we're aware. He's, he's simply the son of the Kuroyas, right? There's not many young guys I, I could like pinpoint that. I don't know. Interesting. And honestly, there, there's no reason to believe what I'm saying is true either. That he does actually is someone we've seen. For all we know, he could be dead. He could be one of the ones from the group suicide. He could be one of the ones that got absorbed. But he also could have been the one doing the absorbing. So, I mean, I'm just saying. For a moment, Yukari was so distracted that she almost missed that. ご存知なのですかうん。個人を出てからは全然わかんない。ゆきこちゃんも覚えていないっていうし、後半ね。The bell rang. Oh, もう授業始まっちゃうね。Finally returned to her desk. Yukari could do nothing but get ready for the next l